Right, we're going to replace this lintel uh, up here. So I'm having to back this off to 155 because I couldn't get up to measure it before. So I'm just going to back off with the flush cut. So I'm going to go in, split, split that line in half. Maybe a little. And then I can just go in. Like this. And because the blade doesn't have a bit here, I can just go in flat. And I can get just got a flat surface all the way along this lintel, taking a bit of weight off it. And now we can just uh, get around and up the scaffold in it. We'll knock it off, make a cut, start again, and just keep uh, creating that process and you've got a flat surface. It's not as easy as it looks, obviously, uh, but yeah, there you go, that's the process. Flush cut blade, 9 inch, flush cut blade, uh, I think it's diathick. And then, so now we've got to use this chain pull to get the lintel up the scaffold. And we're just actually going to lift it in. So we've been building a scaffold today as I've been backing that off. I helped build the scaffold. Um, these boys are just <laughs> going to take some of the boards out so that we can get the lintel up the inside of the boards. But first of all, we need to get this fucking thing up. So we need to pull it up. So we've got this uh, chain pull here, block and tackle, takes three tons, the lintel's is 170 kilos. We got it from the engineers next door, although we have, I have my own ones, but they're quite small. I have a lever hoist, ratchet hoist, and I have a block and tackle. Now, this one, it's six metres long, so it got us up almost pretty much to the height. So I've got six metres to get down and this is probably going to take 15 minutes to get down to the bottom. So, see you later. Right, so when you're cutting out lentils, you have to make sure that this bit here is safe. Because if you just try and cut this out, you're just going to split that. You're just going to split this in here, which is, isn't the ideal. So what we're going to do is, we're going to put cuts in, I'm just going to mark them. So if you look where the pencil marks are, those are going to be our cuts. This needs safe. And we're just going to bolster that basically. And just stick bolsters in. You'll see it when we cut it out. But so that's the reasoning. The reasoning behind say, cutting this bed out is so that this doesn't get damaged. This one. Right, this is actually something I would ordinarily do with a grinder. It's less mess. We were on high street, so we kind of had to use dust suppression here. You want a square cut in here, get it in maybe 20 mil above your rib underneath, and then you want to just carefully chip it away. Right, so as I explained in the video, the, the stones underneath run the risk, uh, like basically splitting. If you don't make this safe and ex and leave yourself plenty of space um, to, for the stone to break in there, the stone underneath is basically just going to, it's going to split as you want this line to split. So if I split this uh, vertically and I was to split it, up and down vertically with it safing it in, it, it would just probably split the stone underneath, which is a, a nightmare. You don't want that. You don't want chips. You don't want any blemishes on anything underneath. Sometimes it's uh, it's difficult to actually uh, t for this to happen. We've actually damaged one of the, the left hand rivet underneath. It was unavoidable. It was the stones absolutely knackered, as you can see here. So sometimes it's unavoidable, but you just have to be able to learn how to fix it properly. If you can learn how to fix it properly so that you can't see it, uh, you're fine. But we have to make sure all that, whenever there's mortar, we need to save in potentially like 10 to 20 mil all the way around the stone. And then we need to put these vertical cuts in. You'll see in a, in a second. I've already went over this again. But these vertical, this is essential with the lintel. This is the only way to do it. As long as that 
back of us is free. Uh, oh, that's alright, that's fine. So now we're free, so it's fine, and then we'll cut out all the sides. Just cut out all the sides. Aye. Uh, which is good because look, we can just pop that. Now the edges. And now we're free, and that way we're not going to split this. Just where you can see uh, that. Stone has to get plenty of room. Always make sure there's plenty of room. Honestly, I cannot stress. This has to be. You cannot take a stone out of a wall unless you create pockets for the stone to split into. Otherwise, you will damage surrounding masonry. Cut a pocket, split the stone into a pocket. Cut a pocket, split the stone into a pocket. The stone has to have somewhere to go at all times when you're splitting it. Otherwise, you will damage the stone around you. Simple. Now, we're going to have saw wedges here. That just stops any movement above. Uh, this one's a bit big, so we're going to ram some slate in it. Um, and actually, it's, it's pretty helpful because you just point over it if it's slate. You have to take a wooden wedge out. You should actually use oak wedges a bit expansion, for a bit of expansion instead of like metal wedges around the land. Only if the masonry above is sort of rustic enough that you can get away with whacking bits, bits uh, timber or slate or metal inside a joint. Or a bed. Don't do it with any dress, stone work, anything so, like that, otherwise you'll just end up with a uh, massacre. That way we didn't need to put in any acros or any uh, any shore in. And we can just cut it out. Easy peasy. This is the most important part. If you can take this this corner of the lintel out without damaging the stone underneath you, you're doing pretty well. So do you this needs to be split clear? in a way that allows me to have a lot of operating room so that when I put a bolster into these cuts, when a stone breaks, has to have somewhere to break into. Like I said, your stone has to have space to break into. Listen to the sound of the chisel as it splits properly. Dunk, 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 dunk. Again. Oh, it's going to look we're, like we're moving a body in a minute, but this is essential. If you're moving any stone, you carpet it, you put it on polystyrene, you do not have any any uh, stone edges or, or corners on anything hard because you'll just chip it. Don't fucking do it. Wrap the fucking stain. Wrap it and carpet. Just get fucking done. Measure twice, cut once. You'll notice that the back of the stone's off. For here, you'll notice that the back's off or not. So we've done it just so it fits. Have a look at how I use my trowel here. There is no need to be trying to lift this and trying to muck about with it and kick it up and doing and just stick your trowel in a bed. Just, just nice, ease. it's called easing the trowel. Just ease it over nice. Here you go, just stick it in, that way you're not chipping it in, yeah. and you just want to just just move it a tiny wee bit. See, under the trowel here, I've, I've, I've burst it, look, <laughs> so I've had to repair it. Bang on. Just like that. That for a fucking that measurement. Spotty dog. Spotty dog. <laughs> Sorry, dog, not a fucking chip in sight, boys. Bang on. Not a fuck. Is it bang on? The building's twisted, so that happens. Right, you can just watch this point for a wee while and just see the finished pictures if you want. Now, I appreciate the support. I seem to be getting some um, and sort of wee bit traction if, and followers. So, yeah, it'd be nice if you could give me a like and a, a comment if you liked the video, if it's helpful. Yeah, especially if it's helpful. Um, I would quite like to See if there's anybody that's um, anybody that's actually uh, using this to any effect, and if it's coming in useful for anybody. So, thanks very much. Please subscribe if you've watched the video, if you like it. So, uh, thanks and bye.